Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu everyone. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri. Wahlu al-uqtatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. So first of all, um, is it even uh, necessary to help our kids fall in love with the Qur'an? Um, as in, why why are we talking about this topic? Is this something that is relevant to Muslim parents? And is this something that Muslim parents should be even you know concerned about? And uh, the answer is that absolutely, this is something that is essential. I mean, it should be one of our goals uh, to connect our children with the Book of Allah, to make them fall in love uh, with the Book of Allah, to help them feel connected with the Qur'an so that they hold on to it for the rest of their lives. And this is a goal that we need to take seriously every single day of our lives. This is not like, you know, if they don't like orange, they will maybe be okay with yellow, right? Or if they don't like, you know, when they're little, if they don't like, um, let's say, Paw Patrol, maybe they will like some other cartoon character or, or, or some other cartoons. If they don't like one particular toy or, uh, you know, one kind of, uh, uh, you know, series of, of cartoon shows, then they will eventually like something else. No, th this, is, this is the book of Allah, right? And the book of Allah is, is uh, something very, very uh, special for Muslims. In, in, in a hadith, we learn that among the people of the world, there are, you know, those people who are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's special people, right? They are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, uh, ahleen, yani they, they are his, his special servants. And who are they? We learn the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that they are the people of the Qur'an. So the people of the Qur'an are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's special servants, and when it comes to our connection with the Book of Allah, then, uh, you know, this is something that is essential for uh, not only worship, but uh, spirituality and scholarship. And if you, if you think about it, when it comes to a good worshiper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who, who, who is a good worshiper? Someone who is, uh, you know, for example, praying in the night or really striving hard in the month of Ramadan. Uh, and how how are these things possible without a person knowing how to recite the Qur'an? Or without a person having memorized at least some portion of the Qur'an? Uh, so fluency in, in Qur'an recitation, having memorized at least some portion of the Qur'an, having a, uh, you know, a, 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 a yearning to connect with the Book of Allah, uh, and, and finding that connection to come easy, this is something essential for, for worship. And when it comes to, you know, our connection with the Qur'an, uh, you know, understanding it, reflecting upon it, following it, all of this is essential for our spirituality, for our connection with Allah Azza wa Jal. How can we know Allah and how can we try to seek His approval if we don't even know what He has said? if we don't even know what he has commanded. So uh, making sure that our children have a healthy, positive, strong connection with the Book of Allah is something that is very important. And I mentioned earlier that this is also the foundation for scholarship. If you look at uh, you know different scholars um, uh, in, in our history, uh, we see that many of them started their journey of learning at a very young age. So, for example, we learn about Imam al-Shafi'i. He memorized the Qur'an when he was seven years of age. And this is not something rare, you know. You see this across different ulama that they started with the Book of Allah, right? They started with learning the Qur'an. And we see this among, in fact, if, if you go even further back, among the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those companions who are known to be, uh, you know, scholars, especially when it comes to, you know, Quran recitation or tafsir, uh, among them, for instance, Zayd radiallahu anhu, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, these are companions who were very young uh, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa passed away. 
And, and these are, uh, you know, companions who were known for their knowledge of the Book of Allah. So when it comes to, you know, our worship, when it comes to uh, scholarship, when it comes to our spirituality, then remember that our connection with the Quran is incredibly important. And, uh, you know, this connection must begin at home. It is, it is parents who can play a very big role in, in putting the love for the Quran in, in their children's hearts. And, uh, you know, like anything that you want your children to pursue, uh, you don't wait for them to turn six or seven or 10 or 15 or, you know, reach a certain age before you, you know, you, 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 you teach them to, to, to do those things. What you want to do is you want to start early, right? And it's never, ever too early when you're teaching your children something. Uh, when it comes to, for example, reading books to children, you know, they say, start when the baby is in the womb, Right. Uh, and even when, uh, you know, a baby is literally a few hours old, you know, there's, uh, you know, things that you can show your baby, especially high contrast things to help them, you know, develop more focus in their vision. And then you, you want to be able to show them books very quickly. You read books to them. You go through books with them. Why? Because you want to develop a love of reading and learning in your children. So it's never, ever too early. And the same rule applies when it comes to, you know, uh, uh, you know, the Quran. If we want our children to feel comfortable with the Quran, to feel naturally, you know, inclined towards the Book of Allah, to uh, to know it, uh, then we have to, um, you know, uh, we we have to expose them to the Book of Allah uh, very very early. Don't wait for them to be, you know, three years old, four years old uh, before they, uh, you know, can memorize something or before they can listen to something from the Quran. Or don't just wait to find the perfect teacher uh, or the perfect Islamic school or some kind of program in which you can enroll your children uh, and only then can they learn the Quran. This has to start at home. And this has to start when children are still very young. And it doesn't have to be, you know, something to elaborate. You know, it, it, it begins with something, with things that are very, very basic. You know, for instance, uh, if, if babies are, uh, uh, you know, unhappy, right, which is very often, uh, one thing that they say is, you know, to calm your baby down, play some music. Well, why play music? Play some Quran, right? Uh, play some Quran, recite some Quran yourself, play the recitation, and, uh, you know, th there's actually really cute toys out there where, uh, you know, for example, a bear and you press the hand and, you know, it, 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 it recites Surah Al-Fatiha, things like that. You know, you could have toys that play music around your children or you could have uh, toys that, you know, recite the Quran, for example. Right. So you want to make sure that they're listening to the Quran from a young, from a very early age. And it doesn't stop. That, that listening doesn't stop when once your children start, you know, talking. Uh, uh, you know, even if, for example, your children are, uh, you know, do, you know, playing with Play-Doh, for example, they're playing with blocks. Uh, even then, play the recitation in the background, uh, not just with little children, older children as well. Uh, you know, for example, uh, your your daughter, maybe a, a preteen, might be very interested in making bracelets. And as she's doing it on her own, uh, have her listen to some recitation. And subhanAllah, there's so many beautiful recitations out there. And children can learn so much Quran just by listening. So one goal that I think all parents need to have is to uh, expose your children to the Quran so much that the Quran becomes uh, something very normal for them. So, you know, something that, uh, that that they're so familiar with, right? Uh, uh, likewise, you know, you, you teach your children different things, different songs, different rhymes. Make sure that you're also teaching them, you know, different uh, surahs of the Quran. So you basically want to surround them, you know, with the Book of Allah.